The rise of Baby Keem is pretty suspicious. Let me explain. Before Baby Keem had shows that looked like this. <laughs> and burst it onto the scene with some of the biggest hits such as Orange Soda, Gang Activities, and more, Baby Keem began getting attention in 2016 as some sort of mysterious writer and producer for one of the most successful homegrown labels in the industry, Top Dog Entertainment. He was known by his real name, Hakeem Carter, receiving writing credits and production credits on songs for J-Rock, Schoolboy Q, Kendrick Lamar, and many more. In an interview with Pigeons of Planes that dates all the way back to 2018, Keem said he first came in contact with TDE by, quote, sending a pack of beats to the TDE email, and it just so happened I ended up on the Black Panther soundtrack. God's a blessing which is pretty odd and I'm gonna show you guys later in the video that this was a complete lie because this was around the exact time that he actually began developing his own fan base and dropping music via SoundCloud with various mixtapes and EPs but he got recognized extremely fast. One of the biggest standout names that he received early recognition from is Drake who seemingly knew about Keem from the very beginning showing up to one of his live streams that only had 23 viewers coming to one of his shows at Toronto that packed 300 people like the comment on Instagram saying he should remix Orange Soda as well as claiming that Keem had the best album of 2019 along with Young Thug's So Much Fun. So did Baby Keem have industry connections well before he was famous? Did it have anything to do with the fact that he was later revealed as one of Kendrick Lamar's cousins? Well, that might explain how he got the dinner with Jay-Z, right? But I think if you dig deeper into Keem's rise, you'll be surprised of how genius these two really are. Let's get this shit. Let's hmm. Top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. Top of the morning. Born as Hakeem Carter Jr., Baby Keem was raised in the city of Carson but grew up in Las Vegas. He started making music when he was 13 years old, after he borrowed $300 from his grandma and got some equipment off Craigslist, such as a mic that cost him $50. He began learning how to make beats on FL Studio and began developing a unique vocal delivery. He started honing in on his craft so much that he had sleepless nights, leading him to get poor grades in school. I was writing that song all day in class. <laughs> like, no wonder your grades was up. Yeah, down, it was, I was sleeping like in class, going Damn, crazy. Cause was, all night you was up yeah, making beats. Yeah, I started getting C's and shit. Now, contrary to what he said in the interview with Pigeons and Planes, Keem started making music around the same time he reconnected with Kendrick Lamar. I didn't see him. It was an unfortunate situation that happened in my family. And then I guess uh, I guess we kind of just connected through that. I wasn't really making music to the point where I would be like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just, I was just kicking it, like, you know, whatever. It was whatever. He didn't really even know until like, like later, later. I finally just like sent him a song and it was just like, oh, he's like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> like he heard something and I guess he's like, I'm gonna play this for everybody in the studio. And I'm like, all right, for sure. After showing Kendrick a few songs that he had created, Kendrick actually liked his sound, which gave him motivation to create more higher quality music in hopes to impress him more. And what's strange is that even though Kendrick liked the song that Keem showed him, he told him not to put the music out yet, which Keem didn't understand why until later in his career. This shows that the moment Kendrick heard Keem on a track, he was plotting on his come up and strategizing, and it's safe to say that it worked. In August of 2018, Keem began professionally releasing music with his first EP, Hearts and Darts. Two months later, released an album, The Sound of Bad Habit, which didn't do much in terms of creating a buzz, until he dropped die for my bitch. That's when he really started to take off. Hakeem held the identity of this underground rapper who had no identity, but this all changed as soon as people figured out that Baby Keem and Kendrick Lamar were cousins in early January of 2020. I'm not sure exactly how the news got out, but one of the people who first covered it was YouTuber Hello Yassin. He tied the connection by realizing he had the same manager as Schoolboy Q and Kendrick, as well as digging up a deleted tweet from Kendrick's sister wishing Baby Keem happy birthday on Twitter. Very interesting, right? But keep watching to the end of this video because you'll realize that this was all a mastermind plan by Kendrick Lamar. On August 27, 2021, Baby King put his foot in the rap game with the single Family Ties, featuring none other than Kendrick Lamar. It must have been planned that Kendrick Lamar's first feature in years would be on a track with his younger cousin. Baby King then released his first studio album, The Melodic Blue, weeks later on September 10th, 2021. Although I did a poll on my YouTube asking subscribers how they found out about Baby King, and mostly everyone picked the options of it being the Family Ties verse with Kendrick, I think enough was done to build King's foundation, and his connection with Kendrick only 10 x his popularity. What I believe is that Kendrick Lamar was planning planning Baby Keem's rise and was planning to start PG Lang a long time ago. And that's why he and Keem literally tried to hide the fact that they were cousins for a very long time. It wasn't revealed until he already had a solid fan base, already had viral hits, and already made it inside the industry because that way, fans will feel like they developed a connection with his music and he wouldn't be known as this guy who blew up because he knew Kendrick. We all know artists that try to put on their friends and homeboys all the time and it doesn't necessarily always work out. We could take NBA Youngboy for example who has a huge label with Never Broke Again full of a bunch of artists that no one 
really cares about other than No Cap and Quando Rondo, which they all built fan bases way before they ever even met Youngboy. When digging deeper into the research for this video, I honestly gained more respect for Baby Keem. He already had an insane work ethic, a vision, and drive before getting a helping hand from Kendrick. Now, I do have to point out the fact that he blatantly lied to us though, because he contradicted himself in the first interview with Pigeons and Planes, and I think it's messed up to give that kind of mindset to producers who are willingly putting in hours upon hours into their craft, feeling like they can easily be discovered through a simple email to TDE, and not ever touching on the grind that's really needed to make it in the industry. But it seems like a few mistakes were made along the way of helping Keem become a great, and that's fine because it all worked out in the end. But eventually, he did start to reveal the truth, and I believe up until now, nothing has really been fabricated by either side. Kendrick's really a mastermind for remaining quiet despite all the rumors and snippets that have been released, showing how much he helped Keem with his sound. Some may believe that Kendrick has been ghostwriting for Keem the entire time, but I don't. And even if he was, <laughs> I kind of don't mind because it's fire. I think he's had a helping hand in many ways, but in the end, Kendrick is the professional here. And contrary to popular belief, I really like to see what Kendrick is doing with his career. He's already conquered the rap game, dropped timeless music after working years under the label of TDE, and now he's beginning to build his team and using his connections and skill sets to bring up underground artists and teaching them how to blow up. The main reason why many music enthusiasts need to care about Baby Keem's success is because no one understands the true potential he has when being mentored by one of the greatest rappers of all time. Many might criticize his rise to fame based on family ties with Kendrick Lamar, and the poll I ran on YouTube proved that most people found out about him that way. However, this may just create bigger shoes to fill for Baby Keem. Let me know in the comments if you guys think Baby Keem has what it takes to live up to the music brought by the LA greats before him. Is he the Kendrick Lamar of the future generation, or will he create a new style of hip-hop slash rap? There's only one way to find out, and that's by listening to his music and see the growth of Hakeem Carter as a rapper and influencer. As always, it's your boy Luesta. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys DM me on Instagram if you guys need a canvas like this one or this one, and check out my highlights for hundreds of reviews and samples of my work. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.